Hello everyone, this is Darwell20, and welcome to episode 118 of Darwell20's Let's Play series. Today, checking in on the colony. Look what Dyer did between episodes. Just a little extension of the paths. Um, so I did learn some things about how paths work. Generally, there's a list of blocks that villagers will consider path blocks, and gravel is one of them. Uh, so if you want, you can manually place gravel paths around, and your villagers will follow them. Um, alternatively, and in addition to that, the path blocks do have special hidden waypoint things in them. So long story short, having paths like this do give them some waypoints to follow, but you can also just give them um, you know, gravel. So if you were to place a couple gravel paths near each other and you wanted to, like maybe they weren't connected perfectly and you wanted to add a couple pieces of gravel manually, that would absolutely work. Um, so there's a list on the, on the, on the GitHub for this mod that lists all the different blocks that are considered path blocks, but you know, that's, that's the gist on paths. Just wanted to update that because I know that was a question I kind of had at one point in the past. Um, and, and right now what we've got is we've got our farm done. Uh, we did finish the composter, so I wanted to go ahead and set that hut up real quick. Um, so yeah, I want to not have you. What I'm looking for is my composter, wooden composter. Now I'm not entirely sure where I want this compost building to be, right? Um, do I want to maybe put it behind my little farm over there? That might be cool. What if we did that? I'm just curious if it would fit back there. Not that I couldn't, you know, clear out more terrain, but that might be cool. That might be super cool. Let's move it over one more, because I want it kind of aligned well with, with the farm here. But then the composter could be right next to the farm, and that might be neat. Now let's let's get in the habit of lifting the blocks up to make sure that we aren't, you know, about to dig a massive hole like we did last time. Uh, but that looks good, right? So we'll put the composter there. And then what I'm thinking is maybe we'll stick the flower shop next to the farm. So like this will be farming, this will be flowering. We might have a wool one next to it. And maybe behind the flower shop is where we'll have the dyeing shop right? Or the dyer shop or whatever it is, right? So like that way we kind of, the pattern here that I'm going for is like, you know, production usage, production usage, production usage, and kind of go down there. Um, you can see I used the road pattern here that looks like it might branch a road off in this direction. We'll see. I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of just winging it with this design because I don't know what any of the buildings look like or how big they're going to be. So I'm really just kind of winging it as I place them down. But I'm trying to have some kind of pattern, you know, like I'm keeping like all the food stuff in one area. As you can see, the hospitals back there, you know, I've got the warehouse right next to the couriers. I've got all the housing. It like so this is my residential zone to do a SimCity style reference, right? It's my residential zone. Uh, you know, my university, some little defense stuff. This is all my woodworking, right? So I've got the mine right next to all the woodworking machines. So I'm kind of, that's the way I'm laying out my village a little bit. Um, but I'm not, you know, obviously that good at designing stuff. But let's go ahead and, and plop down uh, the composter here. And I'm going to go ahead and mention that I did update the version of the Direwolf 20 pack since last episode. So as of this episode, we have a new version of the pack, uh, which is most obvious by virtue of the fact that these buttons are different. Right? Main items to compost. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. That's neat. Now, what else can I comp? Can I do wheat? Is wheat a thing that we can do? Or, 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 you know, somebody tell me what I can do. Look at all these things. So we can search, right? Yeah, let's compost wheat. That sounds like a good time. And wheat seeds. I like that. Um, but let's do build options and begin building. Uh, that'll, you know, start the building request here. Looks like just in time for nighttime. Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, and the main reason I'm working on the composter, the, the the farmer wants compost, and I can only assume that's gonna speed up the rate at which we are doing things, but also for technology, if I would like the flower shop, which will then give me access to the dyer's hut, right? Um, there it is, rainbow heaven, now in color and 3D, the dyer's hut. Uh, so we're gonna have to upgrade to a level three university here in order to get the dyer's hut for sure. Um, but also the flower shop requires a level three composters hut before we can update. So I think the other thing I should do is probably build options. Let's upgrade this dude. I have no idea. It looks like a lot of things are gonna be needed here for the upgrade. This building is huge, as you guys are aware, right? Like look at all the, look at all the, oh wow, there's just gonna be a lot of things. And a lot of one-offs, 
two is the worst part. It's all like you need one of these and one of these and one of these and one of these. So obviously my villagers don't know how to make a lot of those by themselves yet. Um, so I'm gonna have to babysit this upgrade a little bit. Is what I'm is what I'm feeling right now. But let's. I mean, we need to do it. So let's kick it off, right? Um. So like the two main things. Is everybody sleeping? Not quite yet, but that's okay. We'll take a nap. The two main things that we're gonna want to do is upgrade the university so that it can be ready to do the dyer's hut but then also upgrade the, the composter to level three so we can start researching the dyer's hut and potentially other things um so that's cool so so this guy's got all his recipes going on see if we check list of recipes here we've got the gravel into sand we've got the sand into clay we've got the cobble into gravel we've got the clay into clay balls so this thing totally awesome right yes very cool all right so good news uh composter one's done bad news is holy cow does this require a lot <laughs> look at all the things oh it's the worst there's just so much to make i'm gonna be here all day today's episode is me supplying all the things needed for university level three just look at it it keeps going it doesn't end <laughs> university level three is a lot of stuff that's okay i'm gonna do it all off camera so that'll be cool uh do we want to assign a job uh, worker assign yeah let's do that uh stamina and athletics i'm gonna give somebody who's pretty me mediocre i don't think i'm too worried about the composter being the best in, you know it's a composter. I don't need, you know, I'm just saying. But anyway, uh, I'm going to kick off that upgrade. I'm going to do some off-camera work here getting this stuff ready, and then we'll come back. I don't know if I'm going to do it all right now because, boy, is that a long list of things that I have to make. But we'll see. Um, and I also have Eric here who's uh, doing a pickup for me. Now, what did you grab, buddy? Oh, good, a lot of things. Um, there was a lot of junk in their inventory to the point where I think I had mostly filled everything up in here. Uh, so I did a pickup request, which I'm pretty sure means, so like if you come in here and hit the request pickup now, I'm pretty sure what that means is the courier will come over and empty the shelves of everything that isn't currently needed, which is kind of cool. Uh, a neat way to, to make room for all the junk that is needed because, wow, was there a lot of junk that's needed? Holy cow. Anyway, um, I'll be back in a minute. That's a lot. I'll be back in a few minutes. Well, guys, I am excited to say I'm in the home stretch here. <laughs> uh, maybe 15, 20 minutes worth of standing here and making all the things, but we need two lilacs and a couple tulips. Uh, I think I added them all to the to-do list here. So white tulip comes from orange, comes from red, comes from azure bouquet, comes from alium. Do we have azure bouquets? We do have some of those. So I could probably take that. And then uh, lilacs come from sunflowers, which I think we have a few of as well. Uh, so hey, you finished composter two, which is good work, buddy. So I'm gonna put you to work on composter three right away so that we're ready for this. Uh, so we're gonna upgrade you and then you to home. And just to make sure nobody eats my, uh, my flowers that I'm transmuting here. Thank you. Um, so there's the lilacs that we need. I think that's gonna be good. We'll find out if I am mistaken. Boom, 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 and boom. Now, <laughs> for him to actually build the thing, which is going to be a long time, I suspect. But we'll see. I'm going to, I'm not going to stand here and babysit it, obviously. What I'm going to do is go work on something else. Uh, as we've been doing the last few episodes here, we've been uh, kind of spending a little time on the colony and then a little time on some other stuff. What I think I'd like to start today uh, is working on a new mod that I haven't played with in a while. Um, this mod I played with a little bit in, in 112, not a lot, but a bit. And then I played with it a little bit on Forgecraft, like maybe a super tiny bit, like maybe one or two episodes of it on Forgecraft. And I'd really like to do a deeper dive into it to understand more of the nuances and to really get how it works. Uh, it's a cool and fun little magic mod, Nature's Aura, I think is what I'd like uh, to do today. Um, there's some cool 
crafting components that you can get out of this and some there's been a handful of instances throughout the series where i've wanted something that i can easily get from nature's aura but not many other sources so i would very much like the capability to have a nature's aura world set up and just all the aspects of this mod and it's a fun one to play with so that's what i think we're going to work on today so to get started we're going to want uh, the Book of Natural Aura, which we have right here. And this is going to be our guide through the book. So there's there's two different ways you can make these books for modders, right? Um, some people choose to do the unlock things as you get access to them route. So, right, like you can, you can see a couple things, but they're locked until you get further on. That's good. I don't know which way I like better. I don't know which way I like better. On one hand, I like knowing all the things that you can get out of mod. On the other hand, I also like knowing what to work on now because it's very clear what I can and can't do just yet, right? So like, what can I do? What can't I do? Which things should I work on? Which things shouldn't I work on, right? Like all those things. So it's kind of a, uh, on both hands, they're good, right? On both hands, they're good. Uh, but either way, it's all cool. I'm going to work on Nature's Aura today. Let's get started learning about Nature's Aura. So basically, the mod is about the aura in the world, a natural aura that can be used um, to do things like crafting and making items and making cool gadgets and neat stuff. Um, so there's there's pros and cons to using the aura. There's a way to recharge the aura if it gets too low. Negative effects start happening if you're too aggressive, but if you maintain it well, you'll be fine. And the negative effects aren't that bad. It's not like, you know, you're going to lose anything. But it's a fun mod to play with, and it's also one of those, you know, visually nice-looking mods. So, you know, me, I like those kinds of things. So let's get into it and see what kind of cool stuff has been added in 1.16. Because, like I said, I played with it a little bit on Forgecraft, but between the lag on Forgecraft and, you know, some of the other things and, and other people having had the mod so I was able to use some of their stuff I didn't do a good job of really going through what's new in the mod and what's up right so first thing in the chapter this book the book of natural aura I basically read the things and then you're good cool aura conceptually contrary to popular belief aura isn't stored in a single floating nodes but rather it it's present everywhere in the world while touching it is impossible making use of its power certainly is not when aura is used right it can assist in the production of materials the creation of new ideas and harnessing of the world and its components however uh, it isn't always easy, as easy as that. Making use of it wrongly, specifically draining it completely from an area, will face the culprit with diminishing returns. So while aura is plentiful and useful, abusing it would certainly be ill-advised. Kind of like what I was saying before. An additional thing to note is that based on the world you are in, specifically the dimension, different types of aura will be present, making some mechanics work unlike expected. Uh, so basically, if you go to the nether, there is a different type of aura in the nether than there is in the overworld, and you will be able to do different things in the or in the nether than you can do in the overworld, which is cool. Uh, so Scientists are troubled to admit that they have not quite figured out how exactly it works yet. The only thing they know is that it, uh, excess or missing amounts of aura affect an area of varying size based on the apparatus used around the place the modification happened from. If an area is drained and a new generating instrument is added, it will renew the drained area first before creating its own luscious area. Uh, similarly, if a draining instrument is placed close to a rich area, it will first drain that area before moving on to draining the area directly around itself. While this behavior surely sounds complicated, the consensus is that letting the apparatus and aura do their thing for a while seems to be a good approach of analysis, as sometimes aura tends to migrate and move around to balance itself out naturally. Cool. Uh, magical botany. As many readers may be aware, there are several branches of botany. Hint, 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 hint. Uh, a lot of botanists have in the past focused on the magical properties of plants in the form of flowers, such as peculiar and pure daisy. Hint, 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 Batania. Uh, however, botany is a lot more than that, especially magical botany, because not only are things uh, more things to be discovered in nature than just flowers, but there are also more likely more powerful things in the world that hasn't learned about yet. When becoming a botanist and studying the influences of trees, flowers, and the like, one will stumble upon natural mechanics that seem familiar, yet are, at their core, entirely different. Studying and understanding these is the goal of magical botany. So just FYI, botany is a mod that exists. I don't know if there's much crossover, right? Um, so I think one of the first things we're going to want to do, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, is make brilliant trees. Through the years, the botanists have been trying to figure out the magical properties of aura-bearing objects. They have discovered an unexpected yet common theme. Gold seems to always play a role in the interaction between humans and aura. To get into first contact with the substance's powers, one is required to create a brilliant tree that will, when harvested, shed gold leaf, a delicate yet powerful material. To create such a tree, simply craft a bit of brilliant fiber and place it into the crown of a tree. Time will then bring balance. Uh, so basically, we make brilliant fiber, 
uh, we click it onto trees and that will drop gold leaf when we harvest the leaves after they've been processed. And we'll see that in a moment here, right? Um, and then, uh, and, it, and that's, I think that little yellow icon indicates that this is gonna unlock more stuff once we do it. So I'd like to flip through the book and see what's available to me right now before we move on too far. Um, let me see, what's what's this guy? The aura bloom grows in um, any kind of area where the grass, where there is grass to be found, usually in small patches. Um, so this um, are just, plants that help out or a cactus or mushrooms not going to worry too much about those uh creating aura uh we can't really create much aura but there is a note about the rose of oblivion um cool upon the dragon's death they will start sprouting out of the ground on the end island ready to be collected by any botanist and placed in any dimension this flower bears very large amounts of aura that can be harvested in an interesting way dropping an ender eye on the ground close to it will consume will cause the rose to consume it and start dispersing aura in the environment so we will get into this in a bit but there are ways to um generate aura to, to replenish it after you've used it to do magical things let's see what else we've got here um Aura imbalance, what happens when you have too much or not enough aura? We can flip through this in a minute. Um, natural items, we're going to want one of these pretty soon. This will allow you to see the aura in the world. So we'll be uh, taking a look at that in a moment. So that's definitely a thing we're going to want. Powder manipulator. That'll mess with aura things. We'll get to that later too. I'm just kind of flipping through what's available in the book right now. So I just flipped through these pages real quick off camera to refresh myself on how they work. Basically, there's a powder that can either prevent certain effects from happening, positive ones, um, or encourage certain positive effects to happen. Um, and then there's uh, ways to increase animal fertility. Um, and that's basically you, you take that powder of fertility uh, and it allows you know, mobs to mate with each other without any food, basically. Uh, this stuff will make minerals appear in stone nearby uh, using a large amount of aura. So these are some of the effects that occur if there's too much ore in the world. Essentially, when there's too much ore in the world, these effects start to occur and drain the ore to bring it back to the natural state. So you don't want too much, you don't want too many. But if you do have too much, you'll get some positive effects, if you want. Um, so let's start the mod off with the brilliant trees, which is really kind of the first thing we want to do. So we're going to want some brilliant fiber. Let's go ahead and get a stackish of that. Now we're going to need some grass and some leaves. So let's get our buddies the shears. I don't know why I have two different shears, both of which are almost, you know, but whatever. It's all cool. It's fine. We're good. Not worrying about it. Um, let's go. What I should do is get an axe. I should really get like a tree capitati ish axe. I'm pretty sure there is one. I mean, doesn't create have something like that? There is like a really fancy create tool. The deforester. Yes, a radiant axe able to chop down trees in a split second. Kind of want that. Kind of want that. I kind of want a deforester. And you know, it's a little creaty because we haven't touched this aspect of create ever. Uh, but I think I would like to get this before we dive into playing with trees too much. Deal? Uh, so let's, let's absolutely consider doing that. So to make this real quick, we need refined radiance, a chromatic material forged from absorbed light. Um, so there's a mysterious conversion that occurs with chromatic compounds, which can be made in the mixer, but needs to be superheated mixer. So we need a blaze burner, um... Oh, hello. Oh, this is new. This is new. What is this? Identify? What? This is super new. Close, replay. Oh, that's cool. Dude, this is super new. What is all this? Comfy reading. What's that mean? That is bananas. Pondering about blaze. Targets for mechanical arms. Wow, that's neat. Yeah, with a blaze cake, it can reach an even stronger level. What is this bananas that's happening on my screen right now? See, I take five seconds to look at create, and I'm once again just amazed at the shenanigans. <laughs> that is great. All right. Uh, so in order for this to work, we're going to want a blaze cake, right? Um, which needs to be filled by spout. Um, blaze cake base and a little bit of lava. And the blaze cake base is made in a compactor with eggs, sugar, and cinder flour. Um, and there's no heating required for that. My oh my. Making refined radiance is going to take a minute, right? 
the rest of this stuff looks pretty easy to get, right? Mixer over superheated uh, blaze burner, right? Um, I might want to have a dedicated blaze burner for this because I know we have the mixer here, right? And that's this dude. I could probably pull it off though a little bit, a little bit manually. Could probably wing it, right? Because we've already got the blaze burner, so maybe we'll do this. What we'll do is we'll make our blaze cake. So that's egg, sugar, and cinder flour, which is crushed netherrack. I have a crusher, but it feeds into that. Do I have a, a dedicated crushing wheel for making things manually? Mm -hmm. Yeah, look at this. It's all kinds of back stuff. Oh, wow, and you're actually spilling. All right, today I learned. Kind of want to leave this on, but also it feels like it's, you know, not a good idea. I should vacuum hopper this into, an, into a trash can is what I should do. That's what I should probably consider doing. Does this thing have a filter on it? Yes. I'm going to whitelist cobblestone. There you go. All cleaned up. But if there's... Cool. Works for me. So that means the only thing he'll be allowed to void is cobble. Okay, cool. Um, debating if there's a way I can use this existing crushing wheel right now. I'll come back in a minute. All right, so what I'm doing, here's the solution I came up with. Let's see if I'm right about this. I wonder if you have like a massive amount. How much uh, gravel do you think is back stuffed here? Actually, not much. So that's pretty cool. So then what I should be able to get is nether rack here. Yes, and because that's not filtered into nothing, so if I do that, he'll crush that nether rack up and then it'll get stuck there, right? That works for me. Now what if I put like 16 nether rack on there? It's gonna take longer to mush, right? But we'll get all 32 of it all at once. Pretty sure that's how it works. Seems like it to me. Nice. All right, so then the next, hey. I guess he didn't, yeah, that works. There's probably a limit to how much it can accept all at once. There you go. Cool. What I did is I uh, just put a clutch here real quick so I could turn the cobble gen on and off. And that gets me a bunch of the netherrack pieces that I need. Not that I think we need that many, but I was like, eh, might as well just process the whole stack. So are you done making that stuff now? I think so. And hopefully that didn't gum nothing up. I guess we'll find out. Looks pretty good to me. Anyway, uh, so yeah, let's make this uh, this fancy deforester. It's a little bit of work, but I think it's gonna be absolutely worth it because it's a super cool gadget. Um, super, super cool. Uh, and, and learning how to make refined radiance is probably gonna be a useful thing for you guys. So I was gonna do Nature's Aura this episode, but I feel like it's gonna take all episode just to make this stuff. So we'll probably shift into Nature's Aura now. Oh, we'll see what's happening, I don't know. All right, so let's see if I got this, right? Cinder flour, sugar, egg. Right now, you had a filter on what you were allowed to put out here, right? Oh, that's not right. Uh, can I add to the filter blaze cake? There we go. Nice. So now, let's try that again.
Right. And then this thing, no heating required. Oh, it's because it's compacting. That's why. Hold on. I'm doing the wrong thing, aren't I? Yeah. Yeah. We want the compactor. Do we have one of them? There's the mechanical press. Hmm, let's try this. I'm not sure if this will work, but we'll find out. Yeah, no, I didn't think so. Um, so in order to make this, we're going to need a compactor over the basin, right? Yeah, the mechanical press over the basin. Or I could replace this temporarily. How does the mechanical press line up? So that goes that gets spun directly. Okay, I see. Yeah, it doesn't have that kind of thing. All right, let me do it this way. Just trying to figure out how I want this to get lined up. But we should do some create workings here. So we're gonna want our press. Basin. And then what we can do is we can basically look at that. Man, Create got some updates, huh? Let's, let's see. Create definitely got some updates. Now I'm pretty sure we're going to want the basin here. Yes? Does that seem right? Works for me. Okay. That's not terrible. Now, I don't know if I'm going to fully automate this. I guess we'll see how often we need glaze cakes, right? I'm sure it's automatable. But yeah, that looks pretty cool. All right. Nice. And then to fill the cake, we're going to need lava in the filling spout over... Um, that thingy. Or I could do it over a conveyor belt, which might be cooler. Might be cooler. I might want to do that over a conveyor belt. Yeah. like that idea. Um, just thinking here. Could I use an existing belt that's already in use? That would kind of be cool. Does the spout... Um, I don't think it has to connect to the rotational force system at all. I don't think. I don't think. So we'll make, you know, some of these. Nice. This suddenly became a create episode, didn't it? All by itself. Awesome. Spout. Good to go. All right. So could I like maybe just... Maybe. Now this is just going to be a little bit bananas and a little bit not super clean. That's light oil. But... It might be cool. I'm just, you know, oh boy, that's not how you fill a spout. Nope, definitely not. How do you fill a spout? I forget. All right, guys, I think what I need to do is have a pump. Where's my wrench? not in here it should be in here where's my create wrench there you are buddy yeah fluid tank oh blah, blah, blah. all right if i can't put you directly into the fluid now then how you do that let's not use the pump or the the let's try the basin okay that's cool 
That's cool. Now, just for giggles, let's get a hand crank here. I'm trying to remember how the hand crank works. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we're going to want a cog of some kind. I think a small cog will do? Mm, we'll find out. There you go. And then a crank. Now, why are you suddenly up? Down? Yeah, that's what I want. Hey, look, it's draining. Nice. Now, I could obviously automate this, but this is just mostly me not knowing what I'm doing, right? But now you've got a bucket of lava in you, right, buddy? Believe that to be true. So now if I do this, you ready? Whoop. Ha-ha! It works. Now, I should be able to get four lava cakes out of this before he runs out of lava. Because remember, it's 250 millibuckets. All right, cool. So... If we need to automate this in the future, we absolutely will, right? I'm just I'm just right now learning this because it's a piece of create that I haven't played with yet. Uh, but now that we've got the blaze cake good to go, uh, we should be able to make our chromatic compounds in the mixer, which is this dude, with and let's make a let's make enough of these, right? So we're gonna want several polished rose quartz. Should we make a dozen? 16? 16 sounds good. 16 polished rose quartz. No, I think that's being made over there, right? So we'll see if that becomes a problem or not, but I'm gonna turn you off real fast. And I'm also gonna snag this guy so I can add the chromatic dude. I'm so used to using my mouse wheel on other things, but I wanna add the chromatic to this thing so that we can automatically pipe it out of there, right? Sweet, 16 polished rose quartz, perfect. Uh, and then we're gonna want 48 powdered obsidian. And it looks like it has to be the create powdered obsidian, so that might be, turn you off again. We're gonna have to throw obsidian into this dude, aren't we? Uh, and then we're also gonna want some glowstone dust, 48 of you. Cool. And I'm gonna put the rest of this stuff away for the time being. Um, so we're gonna want, roughly speaking, a stack-ish of obsidian. I should really consider having, um, yeah, that should be cool. I should really consider having one of these for manual crafting purposes. I've just, until this point, I haven't needed that. So let's see how this plays, right? because powdered obsidian has a 75% chance to give the obsidian back. So that's an interesting mechanic. So what happens if we do that? Am I gonna get two stacks here, one of powdered obsidian and one of obsidian? And there'll be like 12-ish obsidian in that stack? Guess we'll find out, right? We're experimenting with create today. Suddenly, things. All right, yeah, that's about what happened. Awesome. Cool. All right, so. We'll do that and I'll come back in a minute. All right, so I got my 48 powdered obsidian, which is cool. Uh, I'm, I'm cooking up one more batch of it, so we should get about 16-ish more of that stuff, and that'll be a good time. So in a moment here, that'll be ready. There it is, boom and boom, 64, right? I'm gonna ba doop ba doop ba doop ba doop and then you, sir, are ready for the crafting that I'm gonna do in here, right? Which will be, can I do this all at once, you think? Well, let's do one... Yeah, see, dropping them is a little bit unreliable. I could drop them on here, though. Yeah. And then if I just give you a blaze cake, ta-da! Nice. Now what if I do this, this, and this? Nope, that ain't gonna work. That's too many. Ooh. 
right? So let's do it in sets of three. There you go. That's how you do it. That's how you do it, folks. And then we're ready with our blaze cake to refeed it as needed, right? I don't know if there's any good indication of when it needs to be refed, but... And then because I added you to the filter, you should be spitting out your chromatic stuff. Nice! Cool. Man, I love Create. Oh, look, you're no longer superheated. Eat the awesome cake. Automating this might be fun. It might be a thing to do just for the sake of doing it at some point. The whole process too. We would need a we would need a dedicated crushing wheel. Looking good, right? So now if we check our chromatics, we should have 16 of those. Nice. Nice. All right. All right, so I'm going to leave you guys in suspense, but we'll come back next episode. We'll turn our chromatic compound into um, reinforced radiance, which we can use to make the deforester, among a handful of other nifty gadgets from Create. Uh, what's this stuff? Radiant casing. Neat. Uh, Wand of symmetry. Also a good time. I don't know what that does, but it's neat looking. And we'll come back and do that, and then we'll get into Nature's Aura. We might do... I'm gonna, I definitely want to do more Create stuff this series, for sure, because Create is such an awesome mod. Uh, so I absolutely want to do more with it in this series, but we'll see. Uh, for now, don't want to sign it off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time and check in on our villager, um, who's obviously doing a mediocre job of working on the <laughs> university. I mean, you're doing okay, buddy. You're fine. You're fine. Uh, and how's Kai doing? Is he complaining about nothing? Probably. Oh, yeah, he wants compost barrels and carpet and bars and planks. And oh, yes, we'll get to it. All right, guys. Double 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.